soybean oil, corn oil, and canola oil are derived from genetically modified plants and are therefore depop oils. The most genetically engineered plant in the world is corn, which has been altered to have three transgenic traits insect resistance, herbicide tolerance, and male sterility. Soybean and canola have been altered to have two transgenic traits herbicide tolerance and altered oil composition. That makes soybean, corn, and canola oils depop foods. Palm oil is an environmental killer and should not be used for this reason. Palm oil plantations are responsible for much of the world's deforestation and loss of habitat for many endangered species. And cottonseed oil is full of gossypol, an organic compound that sterilizes men and has been used as a male oral contraceptive in China and Brazil with dire and irreversible ill effects on human health. Olive oil and sunflower oil are derived from natural and not from genetically modified plants and are the only mass-produced oils safe for human consumption. Now, they are also healthy choices for the heart. So use olive oil for salads and sunflower oil for cooking. A grapeseed oil, peanut oil, sesame oil and coconut oil are also depop free oils but are more expensive specialty products. The total global vegetable oil production in 2016-2017 reached 190 million metric tons, of which palm oil is the highest at 63 million metric tons. Soybean is the second highest at 56 million metric tons. Canola or rapeseed is the third highest at 30 million metric tons, followed by sunflower oil at 17 million tons palm kernel oil at 7 million tons, peanut oil at 6 million tons, cottonseed oil at 5 million tons, coconut oil at 3 million tons, and olive oil at 3 million tons. Depop vegetable oils, palm, soy, canola, and cotton, uh, therefore dominate the global market, taking up 85% of the total, while depop free oils, sunflower, peanut, coconut, and olive constitute only 15% of the total. Highly processed vegetable oils are hydrogenated oils, and unless consumed in moderation they are all unhealthy. They cannot constitute more than 1% of a healthy diet. Animal fats are saturated fats and are healthy fats. They help the body absorb important vitamins including vitamin A, D, and E but they too must be consumed in moderation. Hydrogenated fats, on the other hand, are unhealthy fats. Hydrogenated oils contain harmful trans fats. That means margarine and shortening is bad, while lard and butter are good. Not only is margarine made from vegetable oils derived from GM plants, but to make margarine, these oils are exposed to heat, chemicals, hydrogenation, bleaches, emulsifiers, and additives. Margarine is therefore a vile depopulation food and should never be consumed. Cheese is an important part of a healthy diet because it is rich in calcium and a great source of protein. But processed cheese is a depopulation food because it is made of saturated vegetable oils, all of which are derived from GM plants, contains sodium phosphate an emulsifier linked to kidney damage, it is loaded with salt, it is made with milk protein concentrate, a dairy substitute, and colored with yellow 6 and yellow tartazine, food colorings that promote cancer of the adrenal glands and kidneys. Even better, and as a rule of thumb, eat cultured cheese rather than cheese made from pasteurized milk. The advent of the industrial use of hydrogenated oils coincides with the time when the depopulation lobby started using food as a weapon of depopulation, namely the 1950s. It is at that time that false science encouraged people to abandon animal fat and to instead use hydrogenated plant oils. As a result, people stopped eating butter and started eating margarine, and stopped cooking with butter fat, beef tallow and lard, 
thus with animal fats, and started instead cooking with hydrogenated vegetable oils. To engineer this dietary transition, scientists in the employ of the depopulation lobby started publishing false research painting the unsaturated fats of margarine and hydrogenated vegetable oils as healthy, and the saturated fats of butter and lard as unhealthy. The reality, however, is that butter and lard have essential fatty acids, whereas hydrogenated oils and margarine have trans fatty acids that are not essential and provide no known benefit to human health. Quite the contrary, artificially hydrogenated oils are far more detrimental to our health than the saturated fat in butter. The trans fatty acids contained in hydrogenated vegetable oils and margarine raise the bad cholesterol levels, the so-called LDL cholesterol, and lower the good cholesterol levels, namely the HDL cholesterol, causing coronary heart disease. The consequences of eating a diet high in artificially hydrogenated oils are many, because they can cause serious degenerative diseases. The process of hydrogenating oils produces trans fats and trans fats are toxic to our systems because they are not seen in nature and our bodies cannot properly utilize them. Hydrogenated oils are partially responsible for the epidemic of heart disease, breast and prostate cancer, birth defects, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disease, asthma and allergies that have gripped the developed world. They alter the structure and flexibility of cell membranes, causing the disintegration of human health on the cellular level, just as the depopulation lobby intended it because it needed a way to shorten our lifespans. Hydrogenated oils, therefore, help the depopulation lobby tackle the overpopulation problem at the back end of life by shortening lifespan. This is their true purpose and the reason why they are being put into any and all processed and fast foods. Body cell membranes are made of cholesterol, protein and fats. The human body's fat makeup is largely of saturated and monounsaturated fatty acids. We contain very little polyunsaturated fat. Cell membranes have to allow the various nutrients that body cells need from the blood but must stop harmful pathogens. They must be stable. An intake of large quantities of polyunsaturated fatty acids changes the constituency of cholesterol and body fat. Cell membranes become softer and more unstable. Polyunsaturated fats also suppress the immune system. Not surprisingly, the health effects are legion. Hydrogenated oils are responsible for directly promoting heart disease, contributing to breast, prostate, colon and skin cancer, low birth weight infants, raising LDL, thus bad cholesterol, and lower uh, HDL, thus good cholesterol, raising blood sugar levels and promoting weight gain, interfering with the absorption of essential fatty acids and DHA which is an omega-3 fatty acid that is a primary structural component of the human brain, impairing brain function and damaging brain cells, accelerating tumor growth, accelerating the progress of type 2 diabetes, raising serum cholesterol, impairing immune system function, promoting attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD impairing development of the brain of fetuses, causing gallbladder disease, causing liver disease, clogging blood by making blood cells stick together, blocking the body's creation of natural pain-reducing hormones, so-called eicosanoids, causing the creation of free radicals that promote inflammation, creating nutritional deficiencies of healthy oils and essential fatty acids, promoting cystic fibrosis, lowering essential fatty acids in the breast milk of nursing mothers, clogging artery walls and promoting atherosclerosis, causing gum disease and rotted teeth, lowering tissue oxygen intake, directly damaging blood vessels, 
causing high blood pressure, weakening cell walls and compromising cellular structure, as well as causing dandruff and acne. The total amount of fats in our diet today is almost the same as it was at the beginning of this century. What has changed is the types of fats we eat. At the turn of the century we ate primarily animal fats that are largely saturated and monounsaturated. Now we are eating more polyunsaturated fats, which is partially why we have all these health problems. Hydrogenated oils are manufactured by a series of mechanical and chemical processes. First, the seeds are husked and cleaned of dirt and dust, then crushed. The crushed seeds are then heated to temperatures between 110 and 180 degrees Celsius, that's 230 to 360 degrees Fahrenheit, in a steam bath to start the oil extraction process. The seeds are put through a high volume press, which uses high heat and friction to press the oil from the seed pulp. The seed pulp and oil are then put through a hexane solvent bath and steamed again to squeeze out more oil. Hexane is produced by the refining of crude petroleum oil and is potentially carcinogenic. Then the seed oil mixture is put through a centrifuge and phosphate is added to begin the separation of the oil and seed residues. After solvent extraction the crude oil is separated and the solvent is evaporated and recovered. The seed pulp residues are conditioned and reprocessed to make byproducts such as animal feed. The crude vegetable oil is then put through further refining techniques, including degumming, neutralization and bleaching. In the degumming process, water is added to the oil. After a certain reaction period, the hydrated phosphatides can be separated either by decantation, also called settling, or continuously by means of centrifuges. In this process, a large part of water-soluble and even a small proportion of the non-water-soluble phosphatides are removed. The extracted gums can be processed into lecithin for food, feed, or for technical purposes. In the neutralization process, any free fatty acids, phospholipids, pigments, and waxes in the extracted oil which promote fat oxidation and lead to undesirable colors and odors in the final product, are removed by treating the oil with caustic soda, sodium hydroxide, or with soda ash, which is sodium carbonate. The impurities settle to the bottom and are drawn off. The refined oils are lighter in color, less viscous, and more susceptible to oxidation. In the bleaching process, any off-colored materials in the oil are removed. The heated oil is treated with various bleaching agents such as fuller's earth, activated carbon, or activated clays. Many impurities including chlorophyll and carotenoid pigments are absorbed by this process and removed by filtration. However, the bleaching also promotes fat oxidation since some natural antioxidants and nutrients are removed along with the impurities. Deodorization is the final step in the refining of vegetable oils. Pressurized steam at extremely high temperatures, 500 degrees or more, is used to remove volatile compounds which would cause off odors and tastes in the final product. The oil produced is referred to as refined oil and is ready to be consumed or for the manufacture of other products. A lighter solution of citric acid is often added during this step to inactivate any metals such as iron or copper present in the final product. The process of refining vegetable oils damages the fats and makes the oils very unstable and prone to going rancid quite easily. Rancid oils in any form are particularly bad for your health because they introduce cancer causing free radicals into the body without the benefit of including an antioxidant like vitamin E. Fat-soluble vitamin E, which protects the body from the ravages of free radicals, is neutralized or destroyed by high temperature and pressure. 
butylated hydroxytotulene and butylated hydroxyanisole, both suspected of causing cancer and brain damage, are often added to these oils to replace vitamin E and other natural preservatives destroyed by heat. Margarine is the most widespread and damaging food product made from hydrogenated oils. It was created in France in 1869 to be a butter substitute for the armed forces and the lower classes. But at that time it was made primarily from beef fat and not hydrogenated oils. It was only at the beginning of the 20th century that margarine began to be manufactured from hydrogenated oils and more so in the US than in Europe. In 1930, the average American ate over 18 pounds, that's 8.2 kilograms of butter, and just 2 pounds, that's 0.91 kilograms of margarine. But by the end of the 20th century, the average American ate 5 pounds of butter, that's 2.3 kilograms, and nearly 8 pounds, that's 3.6 kilograms of margarine. Modern margarines can be made from any variety of animal or vegetable fats mixed with skim milk, milk powder, water, citric acids, carotenoids, vitamins, salt and emulsifiers such as lecithin. And most of the lecithin added to margarine is derived from GM soybean plants, which makes margarine a depopulation food in more than just one way. There is nothing natural about margarine. Unlike butter, which is made from milk, cream, and salt, margarine can contain a dozen depopulation poisons in addition to the hydrogenated oils that make up the bulk of their content and that undergo nearly a dozen chemical processes and are therefore full of chemical residues. It can contain things like potassium chloride, ascorbyl palmitate, butylated hydroxyanisole, phosphate lipids, tert butyl hydroquinone, mono and diglycerides of fat forming fatty acids, disodium guanylate, diacetyl tartaric and fatty acid esters of glycerol, propyl, octyl and dodecyl gallate or mixtures thereof, tocopherols, propylene glycol mono and diesters, sucrose esters of fatty acids, curcumin, annatto extracts, tartaric acid, trimethylhyhexanol, apocarotenoic acid methyl or ethyl ester, skim milk powder, xanthophils, cantaxanthin, and vitamin A and D. The hydrogenation process that solidifies the oils so that they are spreadable produces trans fatty acids that rarely occur in nature and that are unhealthy because the body does not know what to do with them. In addition, the heat treatment alone that margarine is subjected to makes it nutritionally inadequate. When the massive chemical treatment and unnatural fats are added, the end product can hardly be called either natural or healthy. Margarine is pure and simple a depopulation food that should never be consumed. Let us now see where these hydrogenated oils are used and what foods they adulterate. Soybean oil first. GM soy oil and protein pops up in baked goods. Soy oil and soy protein are used in the manufacturing of breads, cookies, crackers and other baked goods. Soy protein improves texture holds moisture, creates cake richness, whitens bread, extends shelf life, re reduces breakage and crumbling, improves manufacturing, handling and machine ability, and apparently improves mouthfeel. Soy protein is used extensively as an ingredient in hot cereal mixes and breakfast bars to boost protein value and quantity. Pasta products can be fortified with soy protein to increase nutritional value. For instance, the U.S. National School Lunch Program uses soy-fortified pastas with 15 to 17 percent protein content. Soy isolates are used in coffee whiteners, liquid whipped toppings, and pre-whipped toppings. 
that they are also used in sour cream dressings to emulsify fat, control viscosity and provide textural characteristics. Instant beverages used as meal replacements often contain soy concentrates and soy isolates as a source of protein. Processed meat, poultry and fish products have soy protein added to them to lower the price. Adding soy protein to meat and poultry products can also enhance moisture holding, texture, binding and cohesion. Product yield, juiciness, protein quality, appetizing color and appearance, a longer shelf life and palatability. A number of dairy analog products have been developed with soy protein including imitation milk, imitation cheese, non-dairy frozen deserts, coffee whiteners, yogurt and others. Soy protein lowers cost, improves nutrition, and reduces allergenic response. Many companies produce soy and milk protein blends for food manufacturing, combining the two to offer protein content similar to milk in a non-fat dry milk form. The different blends are used as a complete or partial replacement for non-fat dry milk in baked goods, sauces, meat products, and other foods. What about corn oil? The most popular foods that contain corn oil are french fries, fried chicken, pastries, salad dressings and popcorn. Corn oil is the most widespread frying oil applied for cooking french fries at large fast food restaurants, with 69% of fast food chains in the US using corn oil alone or in a mixture with other vegetable oils for french fries while only 20% of small fast food restaurants serve french fries made with corn oil. Corn oil has a very high smoke point at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius, which makes it a good choice for frying and deep frying as its fatty acids won't break down and the oil won't emit smoke. Due to this fact, corn oil is often used for frying chicken. Sometimes it is a component of vegetable oil also popular in fast food restaurants. Corn oil is light in texture and can be used for baking. Its taste is mild and it is not felt in baked products. It is often added for baking cornbread and corn cookies as well as added to muffins and cakes. Corn oil is also a base for salad dressings, mayonnaise, sauces and marinades. Canola oil. Canola oil, also known as rape oil or rapeseed oil, is used in baked goods and in the manufacture of margarines, salad dressings, certain emulsifiers, and even vitamin E. The meal obtained after the oil is pressed from the seeds is used as animal feed, especially for swine. If it comes from Canada, you can be certain that it is GM canola because 96% of the canola grown there is genetically modified and you should avoid it like the pest. The industry argues that the genetic modification is contained in the protein of the seed which ends up in the meal and is fed to animals but not in the oil and that therefore all canola oil is non-GM but that is of course complete and utter rubbish. Now the GM canola plant from which canola oil is made are among the few plants in the world that have been genetically modified to alter more than just one trait. The canola plant has been genetically modified to lend it two transgenic traits, herbicide tolerance and altered oil composition. Cottonseed oil. The biggest producers of cotton are the countries where cottonseed oil is the hardest to avoid. India produces 1.2 million metric tons of cottonseed oil, China 1.1, Pakistan 476,000 metric tons, Brazil 320,000, the US 272,000, Uzbekistan 230,000, Turkey 182,000, Australia 109,000, Turkmenistan 84,000, Mexico 56,000, Myanmar 50,000, and Mali 47,000 metric tons. 
Cottonseed oil is a popular frying oil for the restaurant and snack food manufacturing industries because it is significantly less expensive than olive oil or canola oil and has a high smoke point. It is a favorite for stir-fry and deep-fried foods. The most toxic component of cottonseed is gossypol, which the plant developed to facilitate natural insect resistance. Gossypol, however, is also the most powerful contraceptive found in nature. To make cottonseed oil fit for human consumption, a three-step process of refining, bleaching and deodorization is necessary to eliminate most of the gossypol. Nevertheless, there is always some left. And knowing how the depopulationists operate, it is certain that they leave just enough gossypol in the cottonseed oil to act as a contraceptive without being detected. The Chinese used gossypol as a contraceptive for males from 1970 to 1986, but abandoned it because it caused hypokalemia, low potassium levels, which leads to fatigue, muscle weakness, and even paralysis. In the mid-1990s, the Brazilian pharmaceutical company Hebron announced plans to market a low-dose gossypol pill called Nofertil, but the pill never came to market. Its release was indefinitely postponed due to unacceptably high rates of permanent sterility of 5 to 25 percent. The longer the men had taken the drug and the higher their overall dosage, the more likely they were to have lowered fertility or to become completely infertile. In 1998, the World Health Organization's research group on methods for the regulation of male fertility recommended that gossypol research should be abandoned due to its toxicity. The research, however, continues for gossypol as an alternative to vasectomy in Austria, Chile, China, the Dominican Republic, and Nigeria, which means that these countries most likely use gossypol as a covert method of depopulation. Cottonseed oil is found in mayonnaise, salad dressing, pasta sauce, chips, margarine, and baked goods. Depop free oils. The only mass produced oils that are depop free are sunflower, peanut, coconut, and olive oil at 17, 6, 3, and 3 million metric tons respectively. But since coconut oil is too high in saturated fats and many people are allergic to peanut oil, the only two oils for universal consumption that are healthy are sunflower oil and olive oil. Sunflower oil is light in color and neutral in flavor and has one of the highest concentrations of polyunsaturated fat at 69% among cooking oils. It supplies some monounsaturated fats at 20% and is low in saturated fat at 11% making it an overall heart-healthy option. Sunflower oil is a very good all-purpose oil because it can withstand high cooking temperatures. Extra virgin olive oil and pure olive oil is also an excellent option. Extra virgin olive oil comes from the first pressing of the olives. This results in an oil that has more flavor and a fruity aroma and is less processed, meaning it is considered unrefined. It is also typically more expensive than other types of olive oil and contains the most antioxidants. The refined versions of olive oil, called pure, are lighter in color and milder in flavor than extra virgin oils and can withstand higher cooking temperatures. Olive oils typically have the highest percentage of monounsaturated fats among cooking oils. Olive oil is also rich in antioxidants called polyphenols, which are beneficial plant compounds that some evidence suggests may improve heart health. So stick to sunflower oil and to olive oil and everything will be fine.